What's good YouTube? Welcome to episode 10 of our survival tutorial. In the last episode we finally made it to space and started looking for some uranium. In between videos I decided to go ahead and find the uranium. It took forever, that's why I didn't put it on camera. Uranium is a pretty rare substance to find in the game. So expect to search for it for quite a while. I just went from asteroid to asteroid and searched each one until I finally found some. Now that we found uranium, it's time to start thinking about building a base in space and getting a reactor up at our other base as well. So in this episode, we are going to concentrate on just that. Yay, finally found some uranium. So it took me a while, as you can see from all the different GPS nodes we have around here, I decided to go ahead and get rid of the visual mod that I was using for the terrain. That way you guys could see what this looks like in space generally you can find certain materials further away as they load in you'll be able to see like little red spots that'll be iron you'll you'll get used to what's what over time uranium's still pretty hard to find though it took me quite a while to find this uranium so i'm just going to go ahead and grab up some of this uranium here and we're going to carry it back to the base there's a couple things i want to do when we get back there for the ship i think we have too many of our atmospheric thrusters on here it's still a bit heavy and it uses up a lot of fuel so i think i'm going to get rid of most of those and just go with a bare minimum set of atmospheric thrusters but we're just going to grab up a little bit of this uranium here we still have the platinum from the last episode as well so that'll be cool and then we're going to go back and get us a quick reactor set up now that we have some uranium here and we are going to start working on what we need for a space base. Now I'm going to create our space base right here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of all of these GPS nodes that we've got sitting here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go into the inventory by hitting the menu button and scroll over to GPS and come down here. We've got all of these massive numbers of GPS nodes here that we don't need so I'm just gonna basically come through here and I'm gonna get rid of all of these by hitting the X button on them it doesn't delete them it just hides them which is what we want to do here so the only ones that I want to leave here are going to be the uranium that we just found and the base that way we can just see where we need to go and not see everything else otherwise it just gets really cluttered so I'll be right back with you when I get that done. So the only two that we left are the uranium and the respawn pod here since we haven't marked the base yet. So as you see, we've hidden everything except for the ones that we need. And we can come back in anytime that we need to find something and just find what we need for that. So this uranium is going to be where we put the base next, which is why I left that there. We're just basically going to build the base right on top of our uranium node. Now what I'm going to do to get back to the base here is i'm just gonna fly off in the direction of this one and i'm gonna cut off the inertial dampeners with the left bumper and the y key and just basically drift my way up to the gps node that we already have here but being very very wary to make sure that but being very careful to make sure that we are not gonna enter the sphere of gravity for the planet that way it doesn't start pulling us down so we're still going to be facing away from the planet slightly. We just want to get close enough to where we can go straight down to get to the base. Okay, so we're coming in on the landing pad now. So what I've been doing is basically just readjusting to where I come in directly over the respawn pod as close as I possibly can. That way we've got less distance to travel once we hit atmosphere, which is going to be very useful very soon very shortly because we're getting rid of a lot of these uh, atmospheric thrusters. There's no real need to have all this acceleration. I was basically thinking more of a symmetry thing and decided to add way more than we absolutely needed and I totally agree on that. So thank you for the comments bringing that to my attention. I wasn't really paying enough attention to that. So once we get the center of the ship pretty much directly above the respawn pod we should be able to just drop down directly on top of the respawn pod so when we get close enough i'm going to start turning on the initial or inertial dampeners here just so we can start slowing down a bit and hopefully we'll end up almost directly on top because it takes a while for it to slow down in the forward direction we don't have a lot of thrusters up front so 
it should be pretty close if not completely we can always just move up a little bit in fact i'm going to cut them off for now since we're slowing down pretty quickly here and just head for it a little bit but like i said i'm basically just trying to line the middle of the ship up with the respawn pod uh node here and then we should be able to drop directly down on top of it we did hit planetary gravity on the way out but i just basically flew myself out of planetary gravity by flying directly up that way we wouldn't start falling towards the planet now the main reason i have the atmospheric thrusters here is just so we don't waste a lot of hydrogen fuel because we've only got a single tank of hydrogen fuel here and they can be if you put too many of them on they will be a little bit too heavy and you'll use up a lot more fuel that is granted which is one of the main reasons why i want to get rid of them now but we're still going to use the ones we're going to use probably one in every direction and then we're going to continue to keep the four on the bottom that way we've got plenty of lifting power when we're in the atmosphere okay so now i think it's time to start slowing down here once we come to a complete stop we'll just head straight down and see how close we are to the base all right at a complete stop now so i'm just gonna cut off the inertial dampeners here and i'm gonna start going down i'm just accelerating down is all i'm doing by using the b button here we'll be pretty close we're not exactly on top of it getting the right angle here is pretty hard to do i could probably stand to move forward just a tad so i'll just get a little bit of uh velocity in the forward direction here once we hit gravity it should start pulling us down to the point to where it gets rid of all of our forward velocity okay now we're accelerating down which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the hydrogen engines and turn on the atmospheric engines now, just by hitting the down key. That way we can start slowing down when necessary. So the way this works is your velocity is absolute in this game, not relative like it is in real life. So you can only go 100 in, I believe, 10 uh, meters per second in space or anywhere for that matter. So what's going to happen is if you've got some forward velocity, once you start falling fast enough, it's got to take that velocity away from the forward velocity in order to start going down and to wherever you're accelerating towards. So it'll actually get rid of all your forward motion once you reach. If you notice, we're going straight down now instead of down and forward a little bit in order to keep the speed limit to what it is basically now there's two ways you can do this coming back into the atmosphere you can either go ahead and cur cut on your inertial dampeners now and just let them start taking over whenever or let the atmospheric engines take over whenever it's possible or you can just let it ride and just get rid of all of your velocity near the end that's what's called a suicide burn I like to do the suicide burns because I know that these four large atmospheric engines are more than enough to stop this pretty quickly. Just make sure that you don't overcompensate for or undercompensate for it and make sure that you can stop in that amount of time. Once you get used to your vehicle, you'll know exactly how quickly you can stop and how how soon you'll need to turn on your inertial dampeners to come to a complete stop. But within a matter of like two, three seconds, we should come to a complete stop with these thrusters. So I'm not too worried about it. We're just basically going to free fall towards the base. I'm probably going to have to turn around a little bit and fly towards the base. I think we overshot slightly, but I'm still going to say that this is a pretty good landing. It's not perfect, but I mean, it's really hard to eyeball stuff like this anyway. So, Okay, we're now in an atmosphere in the atmospheric thrusters are starting to get a little bit of bite here so i'm just gonna try to correct our course while we're in free fall paying close attention to how close we are to landing we got about five kilometers it's probably a good idea around four kilometers to cut on the inertial dampeners just to be on the safe side so let's go ahead and do that now like i said it takes a few seconds to slow down completely but we are slowing down quite quickly so I'm just going to start moving in towards the base here. Yeah, we've come to a complete stop when it comes relative to the surface of the planet. We're just moving forward towards the base just so we get directly on top of it and then we'll come down onto the base. The trick when you're flying to something uh, from a long distance is you can make smaller adjustments from further away that make more difference. So you'll always want to adjust early instead of correcting later. 
you'll use a lot less fuel if you do that that little bit of change gets amplified over a long distance all right so we can come on down now we're basically on top of the base and here we go we're getting really close now so what i'm going to do is i'm ooh, okay uh, i gotta watch that we're actually overdriving our engines a little bit here so i'm gonna go ahead and drop some uranium into the base and go ahead and make a small nuclear reactor for the base and then we're gonna start thinking about building our first space base which we're gonna build the first space base directly into the asteroid that we found with the uranium that way we've got basically a full-time power supply and never have to worry about creating any other types of power there we go and this should fill up our tanks too so that'll be good all right so we're gonna hop out and start working on getting this done and we also need to start worrying about what we're gonna do to change our little space vehicle here like i said i want to get rid of some of these atmospheric engines and since we've got a little bit of platinum too i want to see if we can maybe add in one or two thrusters that are um, better for space that way we can use our batteries to maneuver in space when we need to so if we run out of say ice in space then we can still go get some because we'll be able to use the thrusters so we'll probably replace most of these with i'd say at least one ion thruster in every direction if we can afford it with the platinum that we have i just realized we're not completely docked here so let me go fix that okay so we've got a nice little spot up here that we could put a uh, nuclear reactor on we're just going to go with the small nuclear reactor for the base right now it's not going to be quite enough to fix all of our power issues but large reactors are very expensive so we're just going to go with the small one for now as you see i'm going to add that to the build planner and as you see the large reactor here takes 2000 reactor components that is a lot of reactor components that requires uh gold silver gravel and all of that and i don't think we have enough gravel for a large one so we're just going to go with the small one for now so let me go ahead and add that and good we do have some parts here so i'm going to spin this around and just let it work just like that i'm going to leave this as gold because i like the gold color it's kind of nice now, whatever color you have set in your color swatch at any point, whatever you build is going to be that color. So think about that. It'll always show in your it'll always show in your hologram before you place it, as you see. So we're definitely going to need some. We we need to grab some of this right here. I'm just going to grab up all of this that I can. I'm going to have to dump first because i've got a bunch of stuff in my inventory here and just grab up all this gravel we're probably going to need a little bit more gravel than we have because we're going to need one for we're also going to need a nuclear reactor for the new base that we're building so we don't need to build one we need to build two nuclear reactors so in fact i might want to go ahead and add another one of those to my build planner so i can make enough for it and I will say picking this stuff up with the controller is a little strange. So if you feel awkward doing it, so do I. All right, there we go. Now, before I put any of this back in the base and to keep it from just spitting out, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and go into the control panel here. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna find that conveyor sorter that we have that's turned on and we're gonna turn it off. The reason we're going to turn this off is this will allow us to stop the output of all of this gravel. All the gravel's in the base. So let's go ahead and add another one of these to the build planner. So that would be the X button. And now that we've got two of them in the build planner, we will go ahead and queue them up. And let's see, add components. From, yeah, that's the one. And that'll let us know how much we still need for the production. Uh, let's see, we are going to need in total 1300 gravel and i don't believe we have near 1300 so let's find out no we're gonna need to pick up some yeah we're gonna need to pick up some stuff real quick so i'll be right back with you once i go get some more stone and it looks like we're probably gonna need some iron as well but that'll come from the stone okay since we've got this cut set to throw away stone first thing i'm gonna do is cut that off that's actually why i added the sorter here is specifically or on the bar here is just specifically so when we needed to cut it off and we needed gravel we could 
So I'm just gonna fly on over here to where the gold and silver is. And I'm gonna grab some stone off of this area. This is what I'm using to get my ice and my stone and keep it away from everything else because we're already gonna be digging here anyway for the uh, silver and gold. So whatever your closest resource is, just go ahead and grab all that stuff from there. That's usually the best way to do it. So we're just gonna come down here and pick up an entire load of nothing but pure stone here. That should give us enough iron and it should give us enough stone for what we need. Or enough iron and it should give us enough gravel for what we need. Okay, so that is still cut on. I need to cut that off real quick. I never set that up together. I would, if I were you, I would go ahead and gra group those together in the control panel. I'm just lazy and not doing that. All right, so let me just cut this off real quick. So this is an interesting little thing here. If anyone here is using the PC and has experienced anything like this in the past, let me know. Basically what's happening is I just upgraded my CPU from a 1700 or AMD 1700X to a 3950X and it's been running beautifully by the way. But for some reason, Space Engineers has been actually locking up during an autosave. And I'm not sure why it just happened. It started happening as soon as I upgraded my CPU. But if I sit here and wait for a little while, it'll come back, which is the weirdest thing ever. But basically it just goes into a hard lock and it can crash out if I mess with it. But if I leave it be, it'll actually come back. So if anyone knows any fixes for that, let me know. So I think now would be a good time to show you guys the different ways that you can build specific blocks. So we already know how to use the build planner, but did you know that you can actually choose, say, small blocks here? We're going to go ahead and queue up our thrusters as well. We can go ahead and find the ion thrusters under the small blocks here as well. So once you find them in the list here, we're going to do a couple small thrusters. So we're just going to come here and we can hold the left button or left bumper for queuing 10, hold the right bumper for queuing 100, and we can hold both for queuing 1,000. We only need a couple, so let me think. Uh, we only need seven in total. So I'm just going to queue up seven here. I'm just going to hit the X or the, I'm just going to hit the A button seven times and we've queued up seven we're still going to need some more materials here but i'll go grab all of that shortly just to show you okay so it says we're going to need 0.93 platinum ingots which we have quite a few platinum ingots i believe already let me go check the inventory here and we will look up platinum we were able to from what we brought back from space we were able to get close to seven and a half platinum so that should be enough i don't remember how much i said we needed but i think it was like 0.9 or something like that so we should have enough platinum to make everything that we need we just need to get a little bit more gold and a little bit more iron so i'm gonna go grab that up real quick and i'll be right back all right so we just finished up the nuclear reactor here and everything is good we've gotten all of the parts that we need to make for fixing this up so i'm going to go ahead and grind this down i'm basically going to leave one atmospheric thruster in every direction except for down i'm going to leave all four in the down direction and then i'm going to replace some of them with the other thrusters that we are making at the moment as well they're this pretty much the same size for the small thrusters so it's gonna look a little weird but hey it'll work okay so now it's time to add our thrusters here so let me get these added in and i need to switch over to the smaller ones all right so we need some back thrusters these are slightly smaller than the other thrusters so that's not that big of a deal we just want one in basically every direction here uh i'm gonna leave yeah just like that and put one here and one on the other side here one facing forward it's going to be slightly off it's not going to look the most beautiful but that's perfectly acceptable and we're still going to need one in the facing up direction so let's go ahead and add that in here these aren't going to be very effective but they'll get us to ice when we need to and that way we don't use up all of our platinum for it because platinum's pretty hard to come by at the moment. We've got a couple asteroids out there, but we still have to go get them from the asteroids. So let me get all of this welded up real quick. 
All right, so I got all of those put in, and I actually put one extra facing in the downward direction, too. Now that I think about it, we will be in space, so we will need one in every direction. Now that we've gotten all of that done, we are good to go for getting ready for the space base. So what we're going to need for the space base is we're going to need an assembler, a refinery, small reactor, two batteries, and Gatling turret at the very, very least. And we're going to need some ammo for the Gatling turret too. So let's make sure that we've got some magnesium. I'm not sure if I've picked any of that up yet. If I haven't, I need to go pick some up. I have not, so I'll go pick some of that up. But we're going to get all this stuff queued up as well. What I want to do here is I'm just going to add these to the build planner because that's few enough things to add to the build planner. So let's go ahead and get those added. We're going to need first an assembler. Then we're going to need a refinery as well. We are going to need a small reactor. We're going to need two batteries. Now this is going to be a little weird here. I'm not sure how to do the larger batteries here. But I'll just add them here. I'll just make four, let's see, how many does it take for a large battery? We'll just make a bunch of them. That way we can make sure we get the right stuff in there. It's queuing up the smaller stuff here. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to queue all this up into our current ship here by hitting the left stick, pressing on it until I get to the point to where it says shipper station current ship we're going to use our right joystick press down on it to open up everything that's in the the other ship over here or in the base over here and then we're going to come down to this button right here and we're going to hit withdraw components for build planner so it worked with the mouse i don't know why it wouldn't work with the controller i think there may be a little bit of bugginess going on here and you have to hit it a few times here once we get everything made up, we're going to go ahead and head to space and start working on that. So I'm just going to continue to work on production here. I need to go grab some, looks like some iron. Let me make sure. Uh, let's see, do we have any cobalt? Yeah, we got plenty of cobalt. So we're going to need to run grab some iron, maybe a little bit of silver, and that should be it. So yeah, I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and just get all this built up and put it in the ship and that way we can head to space. Okay, so now that we've got everything in the ship and we've got the ship basically fixed up the way we wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and undock here. And we're going to take off into space. We're just going to fly straight up just like we did before and do the exact same thing we did the last time. Okay, so it turns out we're slightly too heavy with the setup we've currently got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on back to the base. And when I get back to the base, we will go ahead and fix it up a little bit and make it a little bit stronger. We just don't have the thrust to leave the atmosphere at the moment. That can happen from time to time. It's no big deal. It's definitely something that you can deal with. It's because we've got the ship completely full of things and we haven't tested it out with that yet. So all we need to do is add a couple more hydrogen thrusters to the rear. That way we can get more forward thrust and we'll be perfectly fine. Okay, so now that we're back here, I'm just going to add a couple thrusters here just by adding some small conveyor sorters to the back here. This should be plenty. Don't quote me on that, but I think it will be. We weren't too far behind what we needed, so this I'm pretty certain will be plenty. If not, we can always add more by doing the same thing. So let's see, go on and find another thruster here sure we got the smaller ones there we go and we can add these in I'm gonna need some steel plates for those and we're just gonna place one of these on each of this this definitely should be enough thrust if it's not there something wrong and I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this welded up and ready to go for you so yeah I think that's gonna be plenty of thrust now the thing to remember whenever you do this is you're definitely going to want to go back in and regroup everything once you're done with that. That way you can keep from using up your hydrogen while your atmospheric engines are still running. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that. I'm also going to leave the hydrogen or the uh, I'm also going to leave the ion thrusters where they're at with 
being on all the time because they use electricity that's not that big of a deal and they work both in the atmosphere and in space so it's not going to hurt anything to do that just a little extra push so the first thing i'm going to do here now that i've got this all grouped up i need to come back into this group here and i need to make certain that the hydrogen engines are all cut off so i'm just scrolling up to the top here and finding the hydra and then we're just going to toggle on off back to off that'll make sure everything's cut off sometimes it'll help to do it a few times okay so it looks like we are good to go let me cut my last thing i need to do is cut my hydrogen tank off of stockpile because i set that up already and i don't want it to be on stockpile when we cut the engines on and we are good to go so as before we're just gonna fly straight up until the atno engines stop working and then we're going to switch over to the hydrogen engines making sure to cut off the inertial dampeners along the way i almost forgot to do that myself all right we are accelerating in the correct directions we should be good to go now we're using a lot more fuel here so i'm gonna have to be pretty careful on my fuel consumption here so i'm gonna make sure that i am actually using the pulsing technique we may get rid of one of these oxygen tanks that we have here as well and go ahead and add in another h2o2 generator just to make things a little bit quicker when we refuel but we're not going to be using this one very much longer anyway that's why i wasn't too worried about the design of it or anything we're gonna start actually making our own ships for in space and this is just bearing back and forth to the planet so i don't think it's going to be too big of a deal i had my dampeners cut on like a, a dum dum there so i wasted a lot of fuel on that one that's something to pay attention to especially if you're low on fuel i'm just going to wait longer in between pulsing engines because it looks like we got some good thrust here we're speeding up pretty quickly once i get to 0.05 right now in order to save more fuel i'm just going to let it go ahead and slow down on its own we should get out of 0.05 gravity remember 0.05 is the limit it'll drop down to zero after that there we go we made it out so that just makes us use less fuel to slow down in order to get our bearings right for the base area that we want to go to might as well let gravity work for us a little bit we didn't do too bad we still have 27 fuel left um that should be enough to get us where we need to go and maybe go get some ice if we need to now that i'm at a complete stop i'm gonna go ahead and head straight towards our uranium deposit here which is where we want to put our base so i'm just going to cut off the inertial dampeners go ahead and get up to speed and just coast on through until i get there so these guys right here are the exact reason why we want a Gatling turret at the base because they will pop up around in space and they will attack you. As long as you got a couple Gatling turrets, you should be able to deal with them pretty easily. So we're just going to make sure that we get a Gatling turret up immediately when we get to the base. Right now we're sitting ducks. We have no way to defend ourselves. So be careful to avoid them at all costs if you can. We actually ran out of hydrogen, so it's a really good thing that uh, we added the ion thrusters in when we did. I'm headed towards some ice now, and I'm just going to go grab that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get up to speed. I'm about 14 kilometers out. It takes forever to get up to speed, so I'm going to get up to speed, and then I'm going to hop out, and I'm going to go grab some by hand to help us out a little bit for when we need to slow down. I'm just going to grab a couple loads and run them back and forth by hand. Seems like one load was enough, but we're just going to come in here and grab some of this ice up and just go on and start letting it do its thing. So in order to catch up with the ship and stay with the ship on the way back from the ice, you're going to need to use your relative dampeners. The way you do that is you want to use both of your bumper buttons and hit Y. And if you do that, basically whatever your current uh target so whatever your crosshair is on you will actually start moving relative to it so basically your your jetpack will lock on and keep you in line with whatever your target is okay now that i got some ice i'm going to head on over to the base area here while it is doing its thing which means i can go ahead and cut off the gps 
that I loaded for the ice now that I don't need it anymore. Okay, we made it back to our uranium deposit here. So let's go ahead and get in a little bit closer here. I'm just going to cut off the dampener so I can drift my way in here. We want to build the base right on top of this deposit. That way we can drill the uranium for the power. And I think it may be a good idea to recess it into the rock a little bit. It's up to you if you want to do that. Um, I think I'm going to build mine on the surface here. It just makes it a little bit easier to build. So we're going to hop out here and we need to go ahead and get an assembler refinery small reactor and two batteries running immediately. That way we've got actual power running here and we can start using some of this uranium. I'm going to leave room to get to the uranium before we start building the base. So I think we're going to place the base. We could just build a drill platform off the base into the uranium if we want to. In fact, that's probably what we're going to do. So we're going to place the base up here on top away from the uranium a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the two batteries that we need and we're going to figure we want to be kind of close to it, but we don't need to be too, too close to it. So we're just going to place it like right in here a little bit. Now we can move this around slightly just so we can get a level with the base if we want to. And I think this should be good. So I'm just going to place one here and I'm going to place one here. And then connected to that, we're going to put the assembler. And as I'm adding these to the build here, I'm actually placing them in the build planner as well, just to make it easier to come back and weld them in a bit. Okay, so we're going to let's see. We've got three spots on this, four spots on this assembler. So I think we need to hook, let's see, we need to hook the refinery up and the small reactor up as well. We're not gonna worry too much about speed modules on this base. This is uh, more of a temporary hold through until we get to the moon anyway. So we're not gonna have to do a whole lot of work here. And we're gonna do the refinery next, which means, let's see, we've got a hook up here and we've got that there. So I think, yeah, that should be a good spot for it right there for now. And we're going to put, we'll probably put our turret right up on top of here because that's sticking out a little bit. And then we'll connect to this with the small reactor. How, however you want to do this is perfectly fine. This is just the way that I'm going to do it. You can probably make it look a lot better. I'll probably have to go through later and make it look better. Okay, we're going to place that where we've got an access port for it. And that should be good for now. And I'm keeping an eye on this guy over here. He's like 13 kilometers out. So hopefully he doesn't get too close and see us. But as of now, we can go ahead and just weld all this stuff up real quick and get some of that uranium in there and get to work all right so now that we got all that built it's time to grab some of this uranium up here so we're just going to use the ship to grab up a little bit of this uranium that way we can start powering the base up through the nuclear reactor and we're going to grab up some of the stone here as well so we can make a connector so I just took the uranium out of the ship here and I'm just going to place it directly into the refinery here we do have some power from the batteries here, so we should be good to go for that. So let's go ahead and put that in. And once we do that, it'll go ahead and start powering up the base here. So that's going to feed our medium or our small reactor here. And as you see, it went green. So we are building power now. And I'm going to take the, some of the stone that we just grabbed out of here and hand feed it in there in order to make what I need for a connector. All right, so we got our connector built in here. So now all we have to do is dock with the ship and get that all set up to work on its own. And then we can also recharge our batteries this way too. So that's pretty cool. And as of now, we have everything marked up in space so we can get whatever we need and just keep it running. So this will be everything that we need to start with for the space base. Glad you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to see these videos as soon as they come out. In the next episode, we'll worry about getting an airtight base together. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.